a warm welcome to uh, all participants to today's Zoom meeting uh, and to the weekly academic session of the Department of Medicine. Uh, uh, we will be having people from other campuses uh, in CMC and uh, I think many alumni from across India and perhaps across the world also. So a warm welcome to all of you. Uh, my name is Anand Zekraya and I will be chairing today's session. Uh, our speaker today is uh, Rakhal. Uh, Rakhal is a professor at the Achyutamenan Center for Health Studies, uh, Health Science Studies at the Sri Chitra Thirunal Institute of Medical Sciences and Technology in Tiruvannapuram. So our association with Rakhal starts in the year 1998 when he did a year of non-PG before deciding to do his MD in Community Medicine, which he did at Chard. Following his uh, training at Velo, he worked in Maharashtra to set up a people's control health system in Maharashtra and later came back to Tamil Nadu to work with the Society for Community Health Awareness, Research and Action, Sochara. In, while working in Sochara, he worked in many areas including gender and medical education, environmental and health, and he also uh, was active in the Ru National Rural Health Mission and the implementation of that and the active involvement of local communities in the NRHM in Tamil Nadu. And he was also very active in the People's Health Movement. Recently he completed his PhD in Health Policy Implementation with focus on community accountability from the Umia University in Sweden and then joined the Ajitamenan Center uh, where he is uh, actively teaching, but he also, in the midst of the COVID epidemic, was co-opted in the Kerala Government Expert Committee on COVID-19. So, uh, while we are mostly clinicians sitting here in this hall, and we are very uh, focused on the care of COVID-19 patients, uh, we are all excitedly watching the experience in Kerala, and we thought that we would ask Rakhal to share uh, his own uh, views about the Kerala experience and the evolving response in Kerala. So over to you, Rakhal. Uh, just about the format for today, I request all those who are logged in in Zoom to mute their mics. And questions that you have, you can put into the chat section, and we will post it to Rakhal at the end of his talk. Yeah, uh, thanks uh, very much, uh, uh, Anand, uh, for that uh, warm introduction. Um, okay, sorry. There's a lot of info. Uh, is it possible? Maybe you should switch off. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, are you are you able to hear me? Okay. Okay. So uh, so yeah. So thanks very much for this uh, very warm um, introduction, and it's uh, great to be back uh, uh, with you all. Uh, of course, virtually, uh, and I probably will miss the lunch uh, at the end of the. Uh, session, but maybe we can make up for that uh, someday. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, what I thought I would uh, share with you all today uh, are some uh, early thoughts uh, on the journey so far. Um, I think there is a, a sort of a tendency to uh, um, to keep on talking about this Kerala model. Uh, you know, uh, as though it was something very, uh, you know, um, uh, well formed and, you know, something that can be transplanted, you know, from one place to another. But um, I, I think, first of all, we have to acknowledge that the story is evolving. Um, I think we are maybe somewhere in the early or early mid phase of, of, of the epidemic. I think there is, you know, much of action to come and therefore there is a tendency to, you know, uh, uh, to be a little more circumspect about, you know, calling anything the Kerala model. Um, so, 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 which is one of the reasons I have, uh, you know, we, uh, we have call, I've called this the Kerala, a uh, sharing of the Kerala experience uh, so far. Um, as you know, the, you know, a model always abstracts, uh, you know, some parts of a complex reality and leaves out others. Um, and, and therefore, uh, it's, I think, impossible to really, uh, you know, um, uh, talk about a model, uh, you know, so easily. And we know that why things work 
uh, and how effective they are uh, depend a lot on the context in which they are implemented and this is something uh, uh, you know as public health uh, people uh, we, and i'm sure as clinicians you also understand that uh, you know you may have protocols you may have you know a whole range of experiences but then uh, the context in which each of those uh, you know uh, are implemented is uh, defines really the effectiveness uh, of of any given intervention whether it's a vaccine whether it's uh, you know an antibiotic or whether it's a public health uh, protocol uh, you know in terms of how many people are able to follow it uh, the effect on a given individual uh, post in, i mean uh, the impact of the individual uh, post the uh, intervention and 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 so on and and therefore i think uh, the context uh is is something that is just so important to understand and something that uh, you know uh, is uh, was very at, uh, attractive to me uh, when i started engaging very actively with the kerala uh, situation um and therefore this general tendency to avoid using the word model uh, and just as a disclaimer uh, i am by no stretch of imagination an expert on kerala uh, or the kerala issues i am uh, an outsider uh, Uh, i'm just about been here for about a year a uh, year and a half uh, and 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 therefore uh, my lens is not one of an insider or or claiming to have any expertise about kerala experience with tamil nadu and using a some sort of comparative lens um uh, on the uh, issue so 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 that is just a slide on some sort of disclaimers to sort of lay the foundation or the framework uh, within which i think you should uh, you know take uh, what what i say and uh, uh, i mean priscilla came up and was said that she was looking forward to some pearls of wisdom and unfortunately i don't think i have very many pearls uh, to share uh, but what i will do is uh, you know some thoughts on uh, the journey uh, so far so uh, i think this is a graph uh, probably all of you are uh, familiar with uh, uh, and this is you know a graph of the kerala uh, you know uh, 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 the the experience with the epidemic uh, the graph uh, the the line in blue is the sort of cumulative uh, number of cases and the line in red is the number of active cases and as you may all note uh there was a relative flattening in the number of cumulative cases uh you know from the middle of march uh, early april to the month of may so about a month or so of uh, relatively slow uh, growth in the cumulative numbers at the same time uh, sort of almost uh, uh, and we had a couple of days where there were zero new cases and we were down to i think about 10 or something like that active cases uh you know before then this uh, huge surge uh, started uh, subsequently and of course uh, this surge uh, is again very clearly because of the um, huge number of uh, uh, cases that are uh, i mean a huge number of individuals persons uh, 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 who are coming into the state uh, both from abroad uh, especially from the middle east uh, and also from other states in india and it is uh, at least uh, as of the first week of may we had roughly 5 lakh 500000 uh, people registered um, from abroad who had registered to come back um, and uh, a roughly equal number of uh, you know individuals uh, from within the country um, and this i'm talking about two weeks uh, ago two three weeks ago almost so 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 we 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 were expecting a, a surge in the number of cases um, and and this is what uh, what what we uh, uh, see um the uh, despite that i think uh, relatively some of the figures that uh, we we keep talking about uh, is the uh, relatively low number of uh, active cases per lakh population and uh, something about a case fatality rate which is uh, lower than the 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 national average and which has been talked about as being extremely low and so on and so forth but i think in general uh, we tend to be a little circumspect again about this uh, figure uh, because uh, i think it's a little early uh, in the epidemic of course uh, there are some learnings uh, that we have that we feel we have regarding the death rate but uh, as of now i think 
we are still a little tentative about uh, claiming that there is anything special going on um, you know with with uh, regard to the uh, case fatality rate um, regarding the sample positivity rate i think again just these are just some introductory sort of comments uh, because these are like widely talked about and uh, while some people see a 1.4% sample positivity rate uh, as a relative waste of tests because we are not picking up a large number of our tests are negative in kerala we generally tend to uh, believe that this low number uh, is a reflection of the uh, the the large scale testing we are doing and 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 therefore uh, we tend not to uh, you know uh, go with the explanation that we need to be more efficient and we need to have we have a higher uh, sample uh, positive rate and i will explain that uh, in 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 a few slides from now um this again is just a reflection of uh, the number of uh, cases uh, per uh, uh, per crore infection per crore this is taken from the hindu uh, newspaper and just to show that uh, i think after an initial surge um, uh, kerala was able to uh, sort of uh, you know have a sort of downswing which is not what most states in india uh, have seen and of course now there is uh, an increase again but the fact that we managed to do this uh, is i think of great interest uh, and and is what i will be uh, focusing on uh, in 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 my talk uh, today um this is just a uh, this is from our kerala uh, dashboard uh, you will find this uh, graph uh, in the on the dhs uh, department of health services uh, website and um, um i think the main reason i am showing this is that uh, there has been a general tendency to uh, to of, of concern that uh, kerala is not testing enough uh, if you look at numbers like uh, tests per million and all of that uh, kerala does i mean it was a leader at one point of time but it now uh, you know there is a concern that we are not doing enough but all i wanted to show this uh, graph for was that uh, i mean if you look at it there is a gradual increase in the number of uh, uh, tests uh, happening uh, over the last uh, um, say 2 uh, 3 weeks and uh, this is i think in response to the fact that uh, there has been a lot of uh, flag that we have got a lot of pressure to Im improve the testing um, uh, and 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 what i will explain that the concern was that we uh, we would we should Uh, go uh, for newer uh, modes of testing newer ways of testing um, and i will explain that uh, uh, shortly uh, these numbers of tests are actually the routine tests uh, that are being done uh, in terms of uh, the uh, screening uh, by the uh, uh, public health uh, system uh, and what are not reported in this graph and i what i have noted in the at the bottom of the slide are that uh, there are another large number of samples that are being taken as part of sentinel surveillance uh, and i will explain that uh, in, in the next slide and therefore the actual number of tests that are being done on an average uh, today i mean uh, so in the last week or so we've touched, touched about 3000 tests uh, happening every day um now there are uh, three uh, different uh, types of testing strategies uh, that uh, in kerala we follow uh, the first of course is the routine testing strategy which is uh, the main objective as it were is for early case detection uh, these individuals are invariably those who have uh, returned from abroad or returned from outside kerala so all individuals returning from abroad uh, or from outside kerala that is from within india uh, have to undergo mandatorily 14 days of uh, quarantine uh, most individuals go for an initial period of 7 days in uh, institutional quarantine uh, after which if they test negative uh, they can go home for the remaining uh, for 7 days um, and uh, the routine test are basically those individuals who have been in quarantine who have returned who have an epidemiological link to travel and their contacts 
um, and and that is really the largest chunk of uh, cases that are uh, testing that is being done uh, in kerala today uh, apart from that uh, you have this uh, chunk called sentinel surveillance and this is actually a slide that is a few weeks old uh, today we are having sentinel surveillance much higher than this almost double the number and uh, that is a separate uh, sort of uh, uh, mode of testing where uh, we are actually now uh, testing uh, high risk uh, groups so called uh, high risk groups and they are defined as the high risk based on the intensity of um, uh, of their contact with the general community so in in so for example we are testing uh, 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 randomly testing uh, our police officers who are who are involved in the uh, maintenance of uh, or to check uh, home quarantine or in involved in duties in the containment zones we are testing health workers uh, who are working in covid centers we are testing ration shop owners where there we know large number of people come and take ration uh, we are testing uh, you know uh, delivery uh, you know food delivery uh, you know executives who, who who are moving house to house and so on so so there is a way in which the government has evolved these uh, uh, you know groups and what we are doing is that we see that uh, these are merely sentinel groups uh, and uh, what we hope is that we will be able, if we find any positive uh, individuals in these groups it will be an early sign that uh, there is a transmission of the disease outside the uh, Uh, quarantine uh, and contact pool that uh, we have uh, you know uh, uh, or that we are tracking so so this is uh, uh, an area that kerala is now focusing a lot on in order to uh, you know detect community transmission and more recently from last week onwards uh, we are also now beginning to test uh, uh, a fixed number of samples every day of uh, people with uh, influenza like illness who report to uh, uh, sentinel hospitals all over kerala and also uh, uh, simple respiratory infections uh, who come to kerala so this is again an uh, an attempt at uh, uh, trying to pick up early uh, uh, any any individuals uh, who are uh, positive uh, for uh, covid uh, occasionally the government does an augmented uh, testing uh, sample this is basically to uh, uh, you know Uh, so it is done once in the past and it may be done once a month i think where on one single day uh, uh, 3000 samples are taken you know uh, from various hotspots containment zones and so on so so basically the fact is that uh, the the testing strategies in kerala has been evolving over time and moved from an early routine testing uh, based on epidemiological uh, you know links to travel uh, and their contacts now to a large number of tests almost uh, 40% of the total tests are being done uh, in in the you know mode of a sentinel surveillance of surveillance uh, of uh, you know uh, community level uh, 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 to pick up community level uh, you know transmission uh, of uh, the disease now uh, just to uh, go over the sort of milestones uh, in kerala's uh, 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 response and i think it's important to understand that Uh, much of the quote unquote uh, success that kerala has had at least in the initial phase uh, up till may uh, of this year uh, is also because that i think kerala uh, started early uh, kerala i think was uh, the the whole system was geared uh, to uh, this sort of uh, of the disease and it built on as i will be explaining uh, in in a few slides to come uh, on the experience that kerala had with uh, both uh, Uh, episodes of nipah virus uh, as well as the h1n1 and the h5n1 uh, uh, you know uh, disease uh, uh, scares or early outbreaks uh, we had um, around 2008 9 and uh, before that so so you will see that uh, very early and you know as as early as january 24th there was a special control room set up uh, as early as january 26th uh, we had our first a uh, round of state level guidelines on screening testing and admissions um and and these were in fact uh, before our first uh, case uh, which was detected uh, on january 29 30th um uh, from around uh, the first i think we had about 1000 uh, returnees uh, from uh, wuhan 
where about three uh, cases were uh, finally uh, identified. And uh, interestingly, uh, these three cases did not uh, create any further secondary cases. And uh, I think uh, that again is a, a, a good uh, reflection of the efficiency with which we were able to track down uh, these individuals. In fact, uh, these individuals, uh, uh, the government knew which flights they were coming on and uh, they had actually tracked them. So every one of these individuals was received in the airport by the health authorities, uh, as it were, uh, uh, which limited the contact they had with uh, the rest of the uh, community. Uh, subsequently, we've sort of uh, moved on um, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, revising our guidelines, um, uh, strengthening uh, surveillance uh, and launching a very effective uh, campaign uh, called uh, Break the Chain, uh, where uh, uh, where uh, we are actually calling on individuals uh, to take a responsibility for limiting uh, the, the, the spread of the virus uh, in, 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 in concert with, in partnership with the uh, various uh, activities uh, that the government is doing. And uh, as early as April, um, uh, actually, uh, we had started uh, surveillance. Uh, that went beyond what ICMR uh, talked about, which was the uh, severe acute respiratory infection surveillance um, uh, and going into these high-risk groups as I had uh, presented uh, earlier. Um, we have a number of uh, very uh, uh, you know, uh, closely uh, connected uh, state structures uh, to control uh, COVID. So there are uh, you know, committees uh, chaired by the chief minister, committee chaired by the chief secretary, um, and uh, the committee chaired by the uh, principal secretary. In addition to that, uh, there are uh, structures uh, that advise the government. Uh, there is a multidisciplinary uh, state expert group. Uh, there is a clinical, uh, clinically oriented state medical board that looks after various guidelines on testing, diagnosis, and uh, treatment. And there is a state rapid response team which looks at uh, the evolving epidemic, the data, and uh, informing the government about uh, the various uh, issues uh, that are uh, you know, taking place on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, this uh, group of uh, committees has uh, led to a large number of uh, outputs, as it were, about uh, 42 uh, you know, different guidelines and adv advisories uh, have been uh, released. And again, this slide is about uh, two weeks old, so there are many more. Uh, there are a number of control rooms uh, and uh, you know happening in every district um, of the state uh, there are daily review meetings that are happening both at the district level and at the state level and a large number of trainings uh, that are taking that are taking place uh, on an almost daily basis for uh, an ever increasing number of uh, individuals both within the system uh, and for the lay uh, public um, I wanted to also highlight the fact that uh, I think Kerala is one of the few states uh, that actually has a multidisciplinary group uh, in addition to all the uh, you know, uh, state uh, uh, groups that are advising the government. So the expert committee uh, you know, that, uh, of which I am a member, uh, we have epidemiologists, uh, ID specialists, virologists, uh, NGOs who are working with palliative care, uh, private sector, critical care medicine uh, specialists, uh, activists, uh, people who are working with NGOs, uh, people who are from the private sector. Uh, so, so there's actually a very wide range of inputs that uh, you know come into uh, the discussions in the expert committee. And uh, as noted here, uh, there is a direct you know reporting of this committee to the chief minister, which. Uh, you know, brings in a sort of check and balance uh, to, to uh, you know, the various uh, administrative, public health and, and other sort of advice uh, the chief minister is, uh, uh, is getting, the, 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 the administration is, is getting. But uh, so this much I will say about some of the key, uh, you know, aspects of uh, the so-called Kerala's uh, success in uh, slowing the growth in the initial uh, phase. Um, but I, I, I hasten to add that I think Kerala has a number of uh, early advantages, uh, which I want to spend a little time on in the next uh, few uh, uh, slides. And, and of course, I think there's a lot being talked about uh, local self-government and the strength of the Panchayat Raj. Uh, and, and I won't be going too much into it, but I think that is something we really need to look at. 
but also and i will spend a little time on the way in which uh, the early nipa experience uh, both of 2018 and then the subsequent uh, 2019 uh, nipa uh, where of course we had only one uh, patient but uh, how that uh, was a very very important uh, you know contributor i think to the success of the what we see in kerala and this of course builds on the earlier experience uh, you know of uh, the preparations the state made uh during the h1n1 uh, uh you know uh, epidemic um and uh, of course the response of the state in uh, for to the floods uh, both uh, in 2017 18 and also to a small extent in um, 2019 so in other words uh, i think uh, we need to uh, place the response of the epidemic um as uh, you know in the situation in the context of systems that are developing over time um such that and, and these systems then enable various experiences and challenges faced over time for example nipa h1n1 floods and so on to provide innovations and learnings that are effectively incorporated into public systems into into social systems that are that can then be built on Uh, at times of crisis uh, like covid so this is the basic argument uh, that i'm trying to build in this presentation that uh, you know whether it is clinical work or whether it is public health work uh, i think we need to begin to look at uh, you know systems at ecosystems at 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 history and at the way that these systems develop over time uh, to really uh, you know explain uh the effectiveness or lack of effectiveness uh you know in a in a given uh, situation so if you look at uh, what happened in the nipa experience uh, i mean you find that actually this was the first time where people in kerala were actually uh, uh you know exposed to the words uh, you know for example index case uh contact tracing quarantine i mean these became household words uh, in 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 the, thanks to the nipa experience and uh, you know the media was talking about it people were talking about it quarantine was not a you know bad word quarantine was something people were familiar about uh, and, and you know uh, the media had a great role to play in it and and i think this was a huge contribution to the fact that the moment uh, you know we had covid we about you know, that this quarantine people got people understood exactly what you know, we were talking about and we were able to use this early experience uh, you know in terms of uh, uh, you know that effectively uh, we also learned a lot about uh, you know the importance of community involvement and the importance of having early uh, early on treatment protocols and advisories in order to uh, you know avoid confusion in order to uh, have a, a, a lot of clarity in the way we uh, respond uh, as as a system Uh, and also people you know uh, started getting used to actually wearing masks uh, to to keeping a social uh, physical distance uh, again uh, uh, learning from the 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 nipa uh, experience uh, significantly uh, if you actually talk to uh, people who are involved in the nipa and who are involved in h1n1 uh, preparation what they will tell you is that as a system uh, kerala uh, was uh, was able to shift in thinking Uh, of how to handle a uh, vector borne disease because most public health systems are focused on vector borne disease control so whether it's malaria whether it's chikungunya whether it's dengue or lepto uh, it's largely zoonoses that either come from a vector or you know you get it from you know uh, moving into a particular environment uh, and and so on but h1n1 subsequently nipa and now covid has actually marked a paradigm shift of thinking where we have to now think about systems uh, where there is human to human transmission and and that i think is something that uh, we struggled with in h1n1 to begin to understand and i think the system was slow and creaking and trying to get used to it but it sort of i think got a great philip in nipa and then we were able to actually take off running uh, you know uh, land running as it were uh, when it came to covid so this whole shift this paradigm shift of thinking from Uh, a system thinking about vector borne disease to a human to human transmission i think is something really really critical and probably you are all facing the same thing you know in clinical work uh, you know when suddenly now this whole thing about each individual patient being a, pos a possible you know 
uh, you know, uh, a source of disease or doctors or health workers being sources of or potential sources for patients, you know, this human to human element and how that is changing practice and, you know, how systems are able to cope with it, uh, I think is something, uh, you know, really uh, important. Uh, for the first time in H1N1, I think the health system started talking to doctors who are in ports, in airports, talking to the revenue department, uh, talking to the forest department, which I think, uh, which was there. I mean, intersectoral meetings are always there in an epidemic, but I think it was only in this situation where you needed to change your paradigm of thinking that intersectoral meetings, in fact, uh, became study circles. In fact, uh, some interviews I've done with individuals uh, involved in the COVID, in the Nipah time, in fact, uh, very interestingly talk about how for the first time they understood what police did, what the revenue department did, and what the forest department did. At the same time, uh, you know, uh, the forest department understood what epidemiology was all about. Uh, and the revenue department the system as it were uh, to to sort of uh, you know the, the what we see in 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 covid in the in the response to covid similarly there have been this whole um, ardram and i'm sure you've heard a lot about it but i just want to focus on this one last point uh, that is there which is not necessarily talked about very much and what is known as the composite training where every uh, ardram uh, family health center uh, has a three-day uh, workshop between the panchayat president, the panchayat secretary, the doctors and other staff members uh, uh, to, to evolve a, a, a common plan uh, where the panchayat uh, is an equal stakeholder uh, with the medical uh, team, with the health team. And, and these composite trainings, I think, greatly helped in, uh, you know, again, this uh, local community participation and, uh, you know, what the health system was expecting. And many people uh, talk about how this is a sort of uh, multiplier of the effects uh, of the public health uh, system. Similarly, we have a huge uh, uh, network of uh, palliative care uh, uh, in, in, in Kerala. And again, this is something all of you must be quite familiar with. Uh, but I think what happens is that because of this uh, pa palliative care network that was developed over time uh, in Kerala, the fact that every panchayat now has active programs on palliative care, there were actually a large number of, for example, vehicles, resources, volunteers uh, at the panchayat level who had some idea about who the uh, you know, vulnerable individuals were, who were the individuals who required care in times of lockdown, what type of care they required and so on. And, and the government and the system was able to very effectively make use of these uh, resources uh, in their uh, 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 response. Uh, similarly, uh, again, uh, because of the uh, response from uh, uh, NIPA, we realized the help of uh, these call centers. Uh, so not only is there a call center that talks about uh, COVID and testing and you know what to do in when you have symptoms or not, but in addition, we in Kerala we have a psychosocial helpline where any individual who is in quarantine can call uh, if he's feeling down, if he's feeling depressed, if he's, if he's facing stigma, if he or she is having any, any psychosocial problem. And, and, and the teams all over Kerala are fielding uh, you know, hundreds and thousands of phone calls uh, every day. There are also special call centers for elderly, uh, who uh, a special call center number for elderly who, who, who are living alone. So, so what I'm trying to really get at is that we, if you really want to look at the Kerala experience, uh, I think we need to go beyond just the public health uh, sort of uh, activities which are well talked about, uh, but also to look at this, uh, this wealth of history on which Kerala develops and the wide range of resources uh, and systems that uh, Kerala put into uh, practice uh, you know, during the uh, sort of uh, epidemic. And I think one of the most interesting uh, sociological, uh, I mean, uh, uh, thing, uh, phenomenons I've noticed is this daily press briefing uh, by the chief minister. And uh, it's, it's really fascinating uh, because uh, 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 we find this, uh, it's like almost, uh, you know, Kerala stops at around six o'clock, uh, you know, and everybody is listening uh, to this uh, chief minister's talk. 
uh, and 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 it's it's like you know everything falls silent and if you just sit quietly you'll be hearing him talking from every house every you know, and it's 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 like you know and and friends uh, people my uh, friends who you know non medicals non doctors you know call it the daily epidemiology class uh, where the chief minister you know talks about the disease talks about what is going to happen talks about what we are expecting uh, you know and everybody listens to it like a tv series you know it's like something that is uh, and it has shown that we we and we feel that it has contributed a lot uh, as a counter to fake news because you know this is something that is stressed trusted which is legitimate and you know contributes a lot and helps in being, building a discourse around the epidemic in fact one of the uh, critical things that has happened and i mean if uh, may, may, many of you may not be following that uh, this whole series of talks that uh, the chief minister gives but is also the fact that uh, you know we've sort of uh, managed to uh, he sort of i mean the, the discourse built is that yes despite these large number of cases that are uh, increasing in kerala Uh, these are all cases of imported uh, you know uh, individual individuals who come from outside and what we really need to focus on are the number of secondary cases the number of local cases you know who acquire infection from this and and this whole debate has uh, this process you know very effectively been brought in over the last two weeks by these uh, talks of course it's not uh, the question of one chief minister or the chief minister but it's a question of the state being really to Uh, have an open and transparent dialogue on a daily basis with the community and again this was uh, i think first done in the nipa time where at that time it was the health minister uh, uh, i think shrimati teacher who, who who took a lead in this uh, public engagement and in think in covid uh, we learned very early and early in march the chief minister started uh, you know giving these uh, days so so i think like i said i think it's we we need to see the kerala experience as a much more rounded sort of systemic uh, experience um, uh, and a lot of thought having gone into it uh, and building upon uh, the early success and it is in this situation that we need to see the success of uh, you know the uh, public uh, you know outreach the behavioral change uh, you know attempts the so so called take the chain uh, you know uh, campaign which again probably many of you have come across and uh, of course uh, the, the protection of the right and I, uh, i think uh, while there are a few reports that have talked about it i think it's really critical to understand uh, how uh, you know uh, for example the kerala cooperative bank uh, stepped in uh, to to actually uh, fi finance uh, a huge amount of the uh, you know government uh, spending on uh, welfare pensions so that you know people elderly people vulnerable people uh, retired people actually have some liquid cash uh, you know available during times of lockdown the fact that the government is able to actually think about this whole com uh, concept of community kitchen knowing full well that there would be a large number of people who would not be able to meet their daily uh, food requirements and again this as i uh, you know mentioned in the slide came from the experience of uh, uh, community kitchens uh, set up in the floods but again i think it has stood a uh, very good stead uh, you know uh, for that and 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 similarly the issue of my, uh, guest workers Uh, as you know in in kerala we don't refer to these individuals as migrant workers we call them guest workers and and uh, they i mean it, it goes beyond just the semantics of the words used in fact the government uh, you know gave each of these individuals uh, 200 rupees uh, top up charge for example just so that they can effectively talk uh, they can talk to their uh, you know uh, their people back home and reassure them uh, you know that uh, 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 you know things are okay and so on and so forth so so the point is again and again i think uh, uh, what i'm trying to highlight is the fact of uh, you know the 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 systems response going way beyond just the medical and the public health uh, uh, response uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, again uh, uh, various you know uh, issues of social capital building so many of you may have heard of the self help groups called kudumbashri Uh, and also this whole concept of janmaitri police where the state government has actually taken a very significant attempt at rebranding police into making them more friendly more approachable and so on it's a huge rebranding exercise that has been going on for some years now um, and uh, i think it and and many people uh, you know attribute the 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 amount of uh, you know uh, ability for the police and the public health staff to actually enforce 
uh, you know, um, uh, quarantine to a large extent, uh, you know, uh, thanks to this whole uh, rebranding exercise. And of course, there have been various voluntary organizations, youth movements, the science movements, and various political movements that have all built up this, uh, you know, social capital. And, and, and what I'm trying to argue is really that, uh, is it possible at some point to begin to think about the way in which these uh, complex historical processes in Kerala actually contribute to making public health in, and probably medical interventions more effective. Uh, and I, in this slide, I've just attempted to begin thinking about uh, the effectiveness of home quarantine, for example, um, and to point out that in Kerala, 83.5% of people, of families, have pakka houses. And, and this is a fact as early as 2014, so probably a higher percentage uh, today. Of these, of these 83.5 percentage, about 80 percent of rural households and 84 percent of uh, you know urban households have three rooms in their house. So, so when we are talking about home quarantine, when we are talking about room quarantine, I think here is a context where this is possible, where this is eminently possible. Uh, at the same time, the government has also made sure that about 87 lakh food kits have been uh, you know distributed at the doorstep. Uh, that pensions have been, uh, you know, given again, uh, you know, in a way that there is no crowding in the local bank. For those individuals who cannot cook, there are community kitchens. Uh, all children in registered in Anganwadi centers uh, got dry rations delivered by the Anganwadi teacher weekly to their houses. And you were able to call upon community volunteers uh, if you were an individual in need of help and you would have a dedicated community volunteer come and help you shopping whatever take you to the hospital and all of that so so this whole set according to me uh, actually made the home quarantine uh, you know uh, the, the the home quarantine intervention uh, so much more effective and i would argue that uh, you know uh, that itself probably uh, contributed hugely uh, to the initial uh, success and hopefully will st stand uh, Kerala in good stead uh, in, 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 the time, uh, in, in the time to come. Uh, of course, I think there are huge challenges that uh, we face and, and, and uh, uh, probably my earlier set of slides was largely, uh, you know, very painting a very rosy picture uh, to the whole uh, situation and probably comes from the fact that I knew and I'm quite in awe of the Kerala system uh, as such, but no, we have huge uh, challenges. Uh, I think uh, the uh, the non carelite uh, non-resident carelites they're called. We even have a department of Norca, which is uh, non-resident care non-resident carelites, and uh, those who are coming, uh, you know, from outside the country, from other states, uh, I think is going to be a major challenge uh, on you know uh, making sure that they follow quarantine. Whether we have you know systems to you know. Uh, uh, take care of them to ensure that they are taking uh, you know full precautions and so on and so forth we are really concerned about uh, monsoons and floods uh, uh, and of course the possible uh, resurgence of diseases like dengue lepto h1n1 uh, there are some reports of scrub typhus in north kerala and and these are going to be real challenges uh, you know that our public health uh, system is going to face um, with the lockdown relaxation and the quote unquote success of Kerala in the first, uh, you know, uh, up till May, uh, there is a very, very real uh, uh, concern of the setting in of the prevention paradox, which basically means that, you know, people are going to say, listen, why were we so bothered? Look at it. I mean, there are no cases. Uh, we have done so well. Uh, and therefore, all of this, uh, you know, uh, uh, hoo-ha about, you know, washing hands and all was probably not needed at all. Uh, and and this sort of a prevention paradox is well this well known has been well described uh, you know in in all over the world and and this is something i think that this complacency setting in is something that uh, we as uh, systems and 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 that holds equally good for medical systems clinical systems as well because uh, this is not going to go away in a month or two now we are in this for the long haul and i mean anywhere from you know 3 to 6 months or even a year is the estimate that we need to live with this, uh, you know, before, uh, you know, we get something more, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 significant to do. And, and therefore, I think uh, this whole uh, question of the prevention paradox and how are we going to, uh, you know, um, uh, effectively 
uh, you know, uh, communicate and, and, and work against this complacency is something uh, that we, uh, I think, are really, really going to challenge us in the weeks to come. And of course, I think the issue of balancing an administrative versus a public health informed approach is something that is just very, very, very critical. Because today, uh, controlling the number of cases is seen as a badge of honor. And somehow, if you have a large number of cases, it is seen as a failure. Uh, whereas actually it's just the natural course of a disease. I mean, of a disease in a novel, a novel disease in a population which has never been, which has never experienced the disease, you are going to have a large number of cases. I mean, and there's just no, you know, question about it. But unfortunately, you have this tendency of uh, competing and saying, oh, I'm better than them and they are better than me. Uh, uh, re little realizing that uh, anyway, everyone has to have that large number of cases, you know, till we either find the vaccine or we are effectively, you know, bringing about behavior change to the extent where things are controlled, which again, I mean, I don't know how feasible that is. And, and therefore, uh, there is this need to uh, balance this law and order, you know, hammer side of, you know, lock everything down, close everything down, contain everything to a more nuanced understanding of risk of, you know, of, of uh, you know, containment of, you know, mitigation of whatever, and, 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 and balance that with what are, you know, significant economic and social impacts. And I think that is really going to be a big, huge, uh, you know, uh, a challenge to Kerala because Kerala depends a lot on, you know, reimburse, I mean, the, the non-resident Keralaites and their, you know, money uh, transfer into Kerala. Uh, we don't have such a huge industrial base as probably Tamil Nadu or Maharashtra or Gujarat has. And, and these are all going to be significant issues in recovery in, in you know, in, 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 in future months and how long uh, the government can actually fiscally, uh, you know, sustain many of these uh, large programs. And uh, yeah, so, so I think that is a, a large sort of area of challenge that, uh, you know, we are facing. And of course, I mean, I think uh, while we all talk about the Kerala as though it is a, you know, isolated island, uh, Kerala is very much part of the whole of India. And I think the success and the failure of either India or Kerala will depend on each other. And at some point, I think uh, we uh, in Kerala also need to uh, sort of talk about that and, 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 uh, and see our response as being part of, you know, a larger, uh, you know, Indian or a national response. So, um, I, that's, that's basically all I have uh, in terms of uh, slides and I just want to wrap up maybe by saying that uh, I think uh, while much of this is probably, uh, you know, not something that can be transplanted into another situation, I think there are some uh, uh, clear messages that are coming uh, from here and I think one of it is definitely the need for clear, transparent and honest messaging. Uh, to the community, to take the community into confidence, uh, you know, so that the community understands why things are being done, uh, you know, or at least why they, why, why the, the rationale behind why things are being done. Uh, Kerala has shown that there are multiple networks that are there in society, that are there in communities that have to be, and that can effectively be used in times of uh, crisis. Kerala has shown also, I think, the fact that we can learn from experience. Every state has such crisis that uh, you know uh, it builds on it can build on and probably does to a large extent build on but i think that needs to be done pretty effectively and you know consciously or explicitly i mean care i mean uh, tamil nadu has the tsunami to learn from odisha has you know multiple you know cyclones to learn from so so there's a lot of learned uh, system experience uh, in dealing with these sort of uh, crisis of course maybe of different nature but uh, you know that we can the importance of feedback loops, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, uh, there, were, there are effective ways by which individuals from different groups, individuals from different, uh, you know, uh, constituencies or domains actually can get their, uh, you know, uh, views heard. So, for example, the, as a member of the state committee, I have sat through presentations of the IMA in Kerala. We have had the presentation from the Government Doctors Association. Uh, tomorrow we will be having a presentation from the nurses association. Uh, we have, you know, so we from the traders association. So, so there is a lot of discussion and feedback, uh, you know, and checks and balances going on. And that is something I think governments can and should, uh, you know, uh, uh, put back. And, and of course, a, a robust press, uh, you know, professional associations and so on that are all contributing uh, to this uh, uh, so-called, uh, I mean, at least the temporary, the, the, the initial success uh, 
uh, that we've had in Kerala. Okay, so I will just stop with that and uh, uh, hope this has been of some uh, interest and use to all of you and we'd be happy to answer questions. So, uh, anybody who asks a question, please come forward and so that Rakal can see you as well. Hello, Rakal. I don't know if you remember me. I'm Tambu. Hi. Uh, hi. <laughs> uh, just one question. Uh, there's uh, maybe two. The first one is about trust. How much? Did the people of Kerala trust their administration and government going into this so that they were willing to listen to what they said and not uh, have a distrust of those people? And uh, secondly, the impact on the poorer people in Kerala, I mean, the, the, what you said, the guest workers and those people, was there a conscious effort to take care of their, their needs? And uh, is maybe is because of your good panchayat or I don't know, I don't, how did those people's needs get taken care of? Because it seems that in other places, those are the people who are often forgotten about. So one is about trust and second is about those lowest level of community people, how are they managed? Sure, sure. Uh, shall I take a few questions uh, before then? Queries on the uh, three te testing slide uh, are routine, sentinel, and augmented approaches all using RT-PCR. And do any of these approaches use antibody testing? And uh, if time permits, could you elaborate on uh, the break the chain uh, initiative from Kusum Mori? Uh, I think one thing you haven't uh, talked about, Rakhal, is uh, how politics in Kerala is different from in other parts of the country and what that has to say in the nature of a public health response. Uh, we have seen across the country uh, much more um, uh, 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 a militaristic style of uh, public health response, whereas in, as you have alluded to, uh, a more communitarian response in Kerala and how politics is related to you know, the public health response in the midst of the COVID crisis. Uh, and I think that uh, you have a very in-depth knowledge of Tamil Nadu health system uh, and your comment on uh, what learning Tamil Nadu could have. Uh, we, at the moment, in CMC itself, we are seeing a surge of cases uh, in our thing, and we know that we are in the very earlier part of the epidemic, and it's evolving rapidly. And uh, what, I mean, we are really thinking of what we can learn from Kerala in terms of uh, our inputs into the state uh, public health response. Another uh, question from Professor Murthy. Uh, I'd like to reflect on related mental health issue in Kerala. Kerala has done so well in many health dimensions. However, with regard to suicide rate and use of alcohol use, the state is not doing well. Uh, would you have thought about this aspect of Kerala mental health situation? Okay, maybe I'll just uh, start uh, with a few of these questions and then take another round if that's okay. Okay, so uh, yeah, so first of all, uh, hello. Hello. Yeah. We can hear you, Rakhal. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. So, uh, okay, so. 
uh, uh, coming to the question uh, first on uh, the uh, uh, testing uh, strategy, um, uh, yeah, all of these are RT-PCR just now. Uh, as of uh, now, we still don't uh, have uh, the antibody kits. The government is still not yet, uh, you know, using antibody kits. We just, I think, received the first batch. So uh, all of these were uh, are uh, RT-PCR. Uh, there was an initial uh, idea of doing the sentinel surveillance uh, through antibodies, but since we, the initial kits that we received, uh, you know, had a very very wide diversity in terms of their sensitivity specificity. Uh, the government, as you know, all over India decided not to use that batch of kits and we decided to go ahead with the sentinel surveillance plan that we had uh, using RT-PCR. So, uh, so that's the sort of, uh, you know, uh, specific uh, query. In terms of break the chain, uh, I think uh, it involves uh, 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 a lot of uh, 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 focus on uh, physical distancing, uh, on uh, hand washing, uh, and therefore there are these posters and uh, mandatory uh, sort of uh, you know uh, water and soap uh, or hand sanitizers outside almost every shop uh, outside every establishment and and you can find that now almost uh, universally uh, wherever you go whether it's a stationery shop or a vegetable shop or the bank or the post office uh, or a supermarket uh, you know there will be uh, you know uh, buckets of water or uh, you know sinks or, or 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 you know hand sanitizers and that's like a given uh, that is there and 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 of course also this whole thing on physical distancing where for example in a shop you know not more than four or five people will be you know introduced at a, allowed in at a time and so on and so forth so break the chain is essentially uh, about uh, you know uh, uh, hand washing and uh, effective uh, physical distancing. Um, and it's linked to, and something which I haven't mentioned in my presentation, linked to this whole concept of reverse quarantine, uh, which is uh, one of the, and the other sort of major uh, sort of uh, programs that we've been talking about is to uh, make sure that people with comorbidities and people who are greater than 60 years old uh, remain uh, completely isolated or cocooned as it's called in some places, uh, you know, within this whole epidemic. Um, and, and, and that is sort of the sort of counter, I mean, uh, sort of the complementary sort of uh, thing of, uh, you know, uh, break the chain. Coming to the issue of trust and uh, politics, uh, 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 I think uh, uh, that is an important question and something I've sort of uh, seen as a significant difference between the Kerala uh, and, and, and in Tamil Nadu is the fact that I think in Kerala there is just so much more uh, discussion from so many different, uh, you know, uh, bodies and unions and associations and, you know, uh, that are allowed, that are given space, that are given legitimate space uh, within the uh, decision making, within the governance uh, uh, mechanisms. And I think that is really, really, uh, you know, uh, uh, a big difference uh, that I see from the day-to-day -day, uh, functioning and uh, administration uh, that I noted in, in Tamil Nadu. And I think that is again a historical, uh, you know, process of development of politics of Kerala uh, and is also why I think there is a large amount of trust. I mean, of course, uh, I mean, uh, everybody laughs a little bit about politicians and so on and that is there. But by and large, I think uh, the amount of trust I have seen, uh, you know, uh, in the system uh, is something really quite remarkable uh, and 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 i would think it is higher than you know most places uh, most other places uh, i i have gone and that is i think because uh, of uh, and the second point that uh, you know tambu asked about uh, the 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 concern for the you know the extremely vulnerable the poor the you know destitute and so on uh, the fact is that in Kerala today, uh, you can go to a panchayat and ask for the number of destitute individuals and you will get a number. So, for example, I know in Trivandrum municipality or whatever, that there are 742 destitute individuals. Uh, similarly, I have individual numbers for every panchayat, uh, you know, and therefore it helps to begin with to start saying, okay, you know, I need these many food kits for these many individuals, these are those individuals and so on and so forth. So, so I think the impact 
of covid uh, you know uh, uh, and especially of the uh, control mechanisms of covid the lockdowns the you know travel bans the you know isolations the quarantines uh, that i think has been probably the effect of those have been blunted to some extent uh, by these large amount of uh, social uh, protection mechanisms that the government of kerala uh, has and again i don't think uh, it's just one government as i have tried to show uh, this is something that has evolved over decades of history and and i think it's the overall political system i think that has uh, that that is robust and that is contributing a lot to a large extent to uh, you know this uh, sort of success and uh, definitely there is a you know a concern about a militaristic sort of uh, you know approach in fact very very early on uh, the chief minister in one of his press conferences uh, repeatedly for about a week or so he kept saying that what we want is not social distancing what we want is social solidarity and i think a you know concerted attempt at you know breaking this course of social distancing uh you know which i think is you know for various reasons become so popular uh, all over the world but uh, i think uh, there was a very conscious fact that we don't want to be socially distant in fact this is the time of social solidarity where everybody every one of us has to stand together uh, but we need to stand together separately as it were uh, and, and you know so it's physical distancing but you know social solidarity and i think that is again a very important message uh, that has gone on but probably the fact that it has been reinforced because of the number of individuals who are actually providing advice at different levels so if you look at for example the km abraham uh, committee report which was uh, i think published in um, i think uh, uh, middle of march i think uh, or oh no end of uh, middle of april, early first week of april uh, this is one of the first committees in the country first official government documents of the country that actually said we must make sure that the medicine is not more dangerous than the disease and this was when they were discussing the lockdown uh, and the post lockdown scenario so so what i'm trying to say is i think as an administration uh, you know the government uh, seems to be more open to these sort of uh, various contradictory ideas uh, and diverse ideas and and gives us space to those ideas Uh, of course it takes a decision finally and and many of those ideas may not be taken on board but i mean the point is that it's acknowledged it's discussed and it does play a role and i think that is a huge difference i see uh, in the politics uh, as it is played out here uh, compared to uh, again what i've seen uh, elsewhere i think i've covered most of the questions um, there are any further questions then? what tamil nadu has to learn from kerala yes uh, that's going to be a tough question to uh, answer but uh, i think to me i think one of the important, important things is uh, uh, for the government to one acknowledge a large number of people in kerala Uh, that are in uh, and that should actually uh, multiply and amplify the efforts of the government um, whether this is in terms of uh, um, the um, uh, you know, ngo network whether it is in uh, terms of uh, you know uh, uh, public health knowledge or advice on how to go forward uh, whether it is uh, in terms of uh, actually picking up the individual uh, not uh, benefiting or uh, you know being uh, who are falling to the cracks as it were uh, i think there is a urgent need to diversify the information sources to diversify the uh, feedback loops as it were um, and i think that is something uh, i don't know if i I will not do uh, I was not there and I think that is something great the Tamil Nadu government systems uh, uh, that that in this sort of uh, you know feedback loops uh, checks and balances uh, that uh, that are that are able to uh, you know uh, help move forward but the second i think is the issue of transparency um and i mean i don't know 
and not uh, infantilize you know the population uh, of state um, and, and actually take them into confidence uh, you know explain to them explain rationality explain the numbers as it were uh, and i think that will be a that will go a long way uh, you know in uh, uh, for example uh, you know taking this uh, thing forward and i think one uh, example i think uh, you know uh, is the way in which the whole issue of the uh, you know tabligh so i think top of uh, yeah so so what i was saying is i think you know the way the the, the whole uh, uh, the the uh, this whole issue of the tablighi return is uh, and and how that was handled um, the word was not used even once uh, by any official uh, you know uh, and there was a very clear uh, you know while there were a focus where there was you know contact tracing where uh, you know there were individuals actually following up people who were who had attended the tablighi jamaat and so on and so it was not as though we uh, the kerala government did not uh, acknowledge or did not do it there was a lot of contact tracing around that but you know it wasn't uh, made into uh, something that was you know one community versus the other there was absolutely no stigmatization of uh, any community involved and there was a conscious effort at that so so i think these are all small but very significant steps uh you know that uh, that help in the trust building um of a community uh, to the administration uh, and and i think i i mean i think uh, i think kerala's done that way uh, a, a lot uh, you know um, in in that field yeah so insightful and uh, 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 something we are really looking forward to and uh, uh, thank you for sharing your experiences and we know the very large in fact lakhs of people who are behind uh, the work that you have actually presented to us and uh, so thank you very much and uh, i think if there are further questions i'll send it across to you and maybe you could respond So thank you very much, uh, Rakhal, for uh, being with us and sharing with us. Uh, uh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me.